S Rock Sports on Sam Rock TV. As we always do, we take you through the various European leagues and how the table stands with our soccer analyst, Dennis Kofai. Dennis, how are you doing? Well, Kojo, I'm good. How are you yourself? I'm also fine. We just had a very long day. A yeah, very long day, but you know, as always, the weekend counts as, as the break point for the long days, and this is very relaxed and watch and enjoy all the games. So, I mean, we'll be saving the viewers with the best of analysis of the games, and I mean, we, I, I'm sure we'll enjoy this weekend in the Premier League as it counts. As we are serving you with the best analysis of the game, you'll go for a short commercial break. After that, join us very soon. Who is your best parent in the world? Mommy! Frosty Bite Ice Cream for the love of ice cream. You welcome back from the break. It has been sports with me, Kojo Nunes, and the program is Expo Sports on Sam Rock TV. Dennis, match day today was quite scintillating with some few results that was shocking. What are your picks? Well, you, you see, in, in March Day 3, we saw that the teams had started, I mean, they started, I mean, warming up into, into the league season. We will surely see some of the, the, the main points which we'll be seeing this season. We saw who was able to hold Manchester City by a goal a goal apiece. And I see this as a very good win for Wolves because, I mean, they are coming from relegation and also playing against the champions of last season. So, I mean, if you want to do any, any well in this, in this league this season, you have to get these points against champions. So the getting one point from the champions, that is Man City. It's, it's more like getting four points or, or three points because I mean this Man City will, will they will beat another side by six goals to one, and that is negative five goals minus three points for them. And you are getting zero goals plus one point, and I think that is a huge plus. But I mean another another thing from relegation that is Fulham. They lost their opening games by against against. I mean, they lost their opening games, games. In, in the Premier League, but we were able to beat Burnley by four goals to two, and I think it was a huge plus for them, given the fact that they had spent a lot, I mean, in the, in the transfer window before this season started. Remember, they got a lot of purchases into the team, the likes of Alexander Mitrovic, Andre Shela, Sean Michel Seri. So, I mean, these were a team we were expecting them to gel together, and they have started really reaping their benefits of, of, of spending that much. And I feel these teams might compete, I mean, at the latter end for. For, for even sports in Europa because, I mean, Man City held a Manchester City team who were champions and they, they were ruthless last season. And Fulham were also able to beat Burnley who were, I mean, they, they finished in an Europa League spot. They beat them by four goals to two at, at the cottage with Craven Cottage. So, I mean, it's it's good start for them. I, I feel, I mean, these new boys might bring something new into the, into the Premier League this season. Well, now, Manchester United, they fail. The elephants fail. And uh, I want to ask, is it... A coaching problem, or it was a player to player problem. What do you think it is? Well, you see, I think for Jose Mourinho, it looks like the the, the sort of mentality he has is getting, I mean, robbed by by his 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 current historic his historical antecedents. Because I mean, remember him from from Porto, he didn't get a third season in Chelsea. He was sagging his third season. He went to Inter Milan. He didn't have a third season. He went to Real Madrid. He he, he left. He didn't even finish the season in his third season. He came back to Chelsea and in his third season he got sacked. So I mean, it looks like the the, the, the the bad fortunes of his third season is eating into his mentality and that will in, in turn affect his philosophy. And it is on this philosophy that the players thrive on. Because I mean, you look at this Manchester United squad and these are players who on any day under any good manager they will thrive much. I mean, Anthony Martial is as good as I mean any any other winger in the Premier League. You have Paul Pogba, who is one of the best midfielders in the world. You have Alexis Sanchez. We saw him in his days with Arsenal. I mean, on, on any day, he's one of the best players in the Premier League. But these men cannot draw together under Jose Mourinho in their third season. Why? Because it looks like the manager has a problem with his philosophy. So you look at certain Alexis, Alexis Sanchez and we saw him at Arsenal. He could take on, I mean, five players, six players, eight players, ten players in a, in, in a game and even get to about three goals in a game. But at Man United, he can't even afford to, to give you two take-ons in a game. Why? Because the manager's philosophy has been affected by his mentality. So, I mean, it is intent affecting the players. And these players cannot play, I mean, 
concentrated. They can't concentrate on the pitch fully 100% because look at, I mean, the commotion with Anthony Marshall and Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba, his agent, that is Manuela, he's, he's, he's engaged with a lot in, in a lot of, I mean, arguments with, with the Manchester United faithfuls, I mean, the likes of Paul Scholes and other fans. So, I mean, the player won't get 100% to concentrate and all these count to achieving results on the field. So, if all these things are not in your favour, it looks like the, the Jose Mourinho third season syndrome, that is the of him failing in his third season, might just be happening again. All right, if Jose Mourinho failing in the third season might happen again, then match the four also promises us with wonderful kickoffs, and these are the kickoffs. Leicester City will face Liverpool, West Ham faces Wolverhampton Wanderers, Brighton faces Fulham, Chelsea faces Bournemouth, Crystal Palace faces Southampton, Everton faces Huddersfield, Man City faces Newcastle, Cardiff City faces Arsenal, then Burnley faces Manchester United, finally Watford faces Tottenham Hotspur. Your pick on this match day four, please. Well, you see, Kojo, in, in this match day four, it is a point where, I mean, the Premier League will start to, I mean, develop its shape because in the early games, we saw, I mean, Watford are so far, they've won all their three games and now nine points. And these are not a team who you would normally see them on, on, in this position, that is in the in the top three, top three. at the end of 38 Premier League games. So, I mean, it will start speaking its shape and some things will start falling off the ladder. I mean, we expect the likes of Bournemouth who are facing Chelsea themselves to fall off the ladder because, I mean, but I see the Bournemouth and Burnley game as a very cagey one because the Bournemouth and Chelsea game because, you see, this Bournemouth side, they are a team who they won't lay down their arsenals for you to just play them and, and leave. They are a team who they will attack you throughout 90 minutes. I mean, the likes of Callum Wilson, Joshua King, Ryan Fraser, I mean, Puke, these men will, will play you throughout the 90 minutes. So, I mean, they, 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 they will surely have something to do in the game. And they are coming up against a team that is Chelsea's Sarri. Sarri's Chelsea. And we know the Sarri ball. They want to hold the ball. They want to keep possession of the ball. And these are, they are coming up against men who they would want to attack you on the ball. So, I mean, any mistake any player does can intend to to a counter-attack. And we know how deadly these guys can be on counter when they get straight forward and then they act on the like counter-attacks. They can get a goal at any time. So, I mean, this, this would be, I mean, one aspect where the church players will have to be very, very, very responsible on the day, not to commit some silly mistakes. I mean, we, we've seen some mistakes from these Chelsea guys. I mean, even from the previous season, the likes of Bakayoko, who isn't around anymore. But they still do have, I mean, David Lewis, we've seen him. He's very error prone. Even in the game against Newcastle, he committed it, an error and allowed, I mean, Newcastle to get a goal there. So, I mean, these, these guys will have to be very extra caution to take extra caution in the game you know, in order to be able to overcome these Newcastle, these Bournemouth guys. But I see these Chelsea guys also to be a team who they have traits of champions because, I mean, from their last two games, that is against Arsenal and then Newcastle. Newcastle. They had gone, I mean, some number of years at the St. James Park without getting a win. And they, they went there straight out to get a win on that day. I mean, in about four years or so, Chelsea haven't won at this game, losing, I think, four games and then getting one draw. So. This is an amazing feat because your historical antecedent doesn't count on your side and they were able to play against us now. And their last four games against us now, that is the whole of last season, they didn't win a game against us now. And even in preseason, they couldn't win against us now, but they were able to pull out a 3-2 win at the last end of the game. And I think this is what makes the magical trick because both of their winning goals came at the, at the last end because, you see, when, when, when you, you get these kind of games or you play against these kind of teams who you have, you, you tend to struggle against them. And then you tend to get your winning goals at the end. That shows that, that shows your mental superiority because, I mean, it should get into your brain that, I mean, this side, we can't win against them because you've played 90 minutes against us now. You've played 85 minutes against us now, and it is 2-2. Two -two. And you've played 86 minutes against Newcastle, and it is 1-1. One -one. You surely have the mindset that this is how the, the game goes because you haven't won a game for a long while. But to be able to get that last minute goal at the end, that shows, I mean, mark of champions. And this is how champions are I made. Mean, they go to grounds where they attack that's undergrounds and they do get a win. So I feel these Chelsea guys will also have this mentality with them and they might go into the game all out to get a win. And I'm predicting a 2 1 or 3 1 win for Chelsea on the day. Sure. Now, coming to the Manchester United Burnley game. Now, uh, report states that it has been agreed by the playing body and then the backroom staff and some few members who are part of the ownership that if Mourinho does not win against Burnley, he should be sad. Now, do you think United are getting it right to do away with Mourinho or they need some time for Mourinho to work it out? You see, when, when these sort of things start springing up, I think the better you do away with the manager the earlier because we, we haven't, we are yet to see any manager overcome these things, I mean, 
in, in this modern era. Remember Antonio Conte last season at Chelsea? He, he was kept in the dagger even after he, after his first game when, where he, he, he lost by three goals to two against Burnley. Mm-hmm. And the season went on as well as the it, it went very well as the season went on. So, I mean, when these things start springing up, all, the, all what can happen is that they'll get more well. So, I mean, if the club has any vision of, of I mean, getting a Champions League spot, of competing for the league title, I thought we'll have to part with Jose Mourinho because we have seen it in history. I mean, it is history which repeats itself. We have seen it. He always feels in his third season. And even if when these things start springing up, it always sends a lot of confusion and he won't succeed with all this confusion around. So I, I believe they try to protect the manager or protect anything won't help that much. They just have to let the manager go and start restructuring on how the season will go because, I mean, we've played only three games, three, three, three game weeks. Three games, yeah. We play another four game weeks. Mm-hmm. That means 34 more. In 34 more, a lot of points are for grabs. I think if they keep Jose Mourinho still in the dagger, they might not even make a, a, a spot in Europa League because, I mean, he did the same with Chelsea and they finished 10th in, in his, his third season at Chelsea on his tech, second stint. So, I mean, they, they might not just get a place in Europa if they should continue keeping Jose Mourinho. Now, finally on Jose, uh, Coach Eriksen, who, who now plays his trade in China, spoke and, says, and said, Jose Mourinho is talking too much. Now, do you feel the act of he talking is bringing is, is 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 putting him in the dagger, or actually it is just that it is it is just a repetition of his third season syndrome that is showing up? I believe every coach has his, his sort of approach or how he does his things. I mean, you, you won't expect the likes of I mean Andre Villas Boas to be talking that much in his press conference. You won't expect I mean Eddie Howe of Bournemouth or even Sean Dyche to be talking that much, even though they might have some. One of these where they want to talk that much. But I mean, every coach has a style, and that is Jose's style. I mean, why some is this at Porto? Jose has always been, I mean, sort of sarcastic in, in answering questions at press conferences and everything. So it doesn't change anything that much. I feel his third season just doesn't go well for him. I mean, it's it's in history. Which which third season of Jose has gone very well, if you can tell me. No. no. So I mean it is in history. He always feels in his third season. So I think that the earlier they get rid of him, the better for United. And it has nothing to do with him talking much or anything like that. So they just need to get rid of Jose. Maybe he might do all in his first two seasons at another club. Maybe a Paris Saint-Germain or another big team. But for my United, he's, I think he's done there. As our super analyst thinks Jose Mourinho has to leave Manchester United, then we quickly move on to the Spanish La Liga Santadera, where the match day two ended with quite some... Some short results. We want to find out from our analyst what he thinks about the match results. Well, Real Madrid and Barcelona were about to get a win in, in match day two, and I feel this is normal. Even at Let's Go Madrid, they were about to get a win. And as I told you, this is the point where the league begins to take its shape and form. So you see Real Madrid, Barcelona, Let's Go Madrid all competing at, 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 in, in, in the top positions. And I feel this is what the league gives us. And you see, one more thing that it does to the league is that it, it spares up the interest in the league because when these guys are on top there, that means that when, when, when they compete against each other, it becomes more competitive because, I mean, the differential point comes to who beats who. who, beats who yeah. Because if I'm beating the likes of, I mean, Sevilla, the likes of Huesca, the likes of Real Valladolid, the likes of Getafe, and you're also beating the likes of Girona and the other small teams, then that means that it will come to when we face each other. So, I mean, we, and we've seen La Liga to always be a two-horse race. I mean, Madrid and Barcelona until Atletico Madrid entered, I mean, the frame not too long ago. So it looks like we'll just be having the same old La Liga and the same old stuff going on. But it looks like Real Madrid also, I, I, I won't define their season years though, but they, 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 they are not doing that bad after the exit of Ronaldo and Zinedine Zidane because after two matches, they got six points. Even though the opposition they faced, Girona and then Getafe, they are not that much of a strong opposition. opposition but... Madrid lost to Girona last season in Barcelona. So, I mean, if they are able to get a win this season, it's an improvement. So, it looks like they might be able to get things on the driving match on the way. But let's wait till they face any big test and we can talk much about their, their performance. Right. As we are waiting for them to face every big test, for them to know whether they are good or not, we have to also move on with the show. So, these are the following features for match day three in Sicily in La Liga. Getafe will meet Real Valladolid, Eba will meet Real Sociedad, Velaro will meet Girona, Santa Vigo will meet Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid will meet Leganes, Levente will meet Valencia, Deportivo Alaves will meet Espanyol, Barcelona will meet Hiscas, and Robertis will meet Sevilla. Quite some sumptuous 
Well, I wouldn't say quite sanctioned because I mean, Marvin Legan is Legan, yeah. Barcelona West I mean, it looks like a done deal conclusions in the game, but. I mean, Wesker are they, are they are coming from the the, the segunda, the segunda division. division. That is the lower division, so they don't look that much of a challenge for Barcelona. But they were able to hold down. I think Sevilla also last last week. Last week. So it looks like they, they have some quality because to be able to hold. I mean, this Sevilla side who competed in the Champions League and were able to even drive out Man United. It looks like there's something good for for the team. So I mean, they, they might have some quality to challenge Barcelona. Though. But we saw Barcelona last week. I mean, they were complaining about the stadium. That is in, in Real Valladolid. Real Valladolid. Complaining about the stadium, and we were able to get a 1 0 win after getting 3 0 on the opening day. So, I mean, if we are able to count on this 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 sort of trend, we might see Barcelona getting a draw against West Ham because, I mean, 3 0 in your first game, 1 0 in your second game, then the next game will be turning into a draw, isn't a draw. it? Yeah. Uh, but uh, football doesn't work on that thing as well. It, it has teams face each other. But so I see Barcelona as the favorite for this game. But I expect the West Ham guys to, I mean, pull out some bit of competition and maybe get Barcelona to consider their first goal of the season because they didn't consider in their first game and also they didn't consider against Rafael mm -hmm. So, I mean, we might just see them consider their first game. But remember then Legan is... Well, you see, last season, when, when before Ronaldo stepped into his... his that is his platform, he became the Ronaldo. Madrid was struggling against these guys. I mean, the likes of Levante, the likes of Robertis, Legan is... These were the teams... Madrid were struggling to beat. So, I mean, this season they have started it on the good note, though. And as I said earlier on, we have to wait a little bit longer to be able to define how their season will be going because, I mean, when you have the likes of Isco and Bill and, 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 and the Karim Bezema, you always do it against these small guys. But when you face the Atletico Madrid, the Barcelonas, the Sevillas, the Valentes, that's what defines you. So, we have to wait yet, though. So, I feel Madrid might just get a good win on the day against Leganes. Well, our super analyst thinks Madrid will get a very good win at Leganes, but we have to go for a quick commercial break. Join us quickly as we come back. Hello, my name is Amata Maklo, CEO of Food 101. Food is very essential to every human life. At Food 101, we provide you with healthy, delicious meals. We cook for corporate bodies, individuals, events, parties, corporate organizations. To receive our menu daily, text add me to 020-817-5025. You receive our menu for the day that consists of about 12 different dishes. Text back your preferred dish and it will be delivered to you at your doorstep, at your office, at your home, anywhere you are at no extra fee. Food 101, we are your healthy food partner. Welcome back to x Sports with me, Kojo Nunes. Now, Syria A also promises to be a sincerity one, but we cannot continue until we talk about match day two with our super analyst, Dennis Kofi. Well, well, you see, on match day two, I want to delve strangely on this game. Napoli versus AC Milan. We saw AC Milan, I mean, they, they, they went back into their groove to the AC Milan we knew. I mean, the, the, the Nesta, the, the Maldini AC Milan, the Duda AC Milan, where they went 2 0 up in as early as the first half, but they blew it up. And can't get to your certain thing over Hayoko. I mean, <laughs> this guy, he, he looks like he has done a lot of harm to the game of yeah. football. Because but, 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 but then, this Bakayoko guy, what, was it a fluke at Monaco? <laughs> I, can't, I can't really find someone that, but you see, players do have this sort of ups and downs, even, even in, in their early stages. And I don't want to make this a point blank statement, but Bakayoko, we have been told, is around 22, 23 years, but. He really, really looks older than that. I mean, he, he looks like some 28-year-old, and considering that he's an Ivorian, I mean, last week we heard a news of a Gabonese player who said he was four years older than he claimed to be. So, I mean, it could be possible that Bakayoko might be four years older or maybe six years older than what he claimed to be. So, and you know, players also reach their, their peak at certain age. So, maybe he got his peak when he was he was maybe 28 years old, but he was telling us he was 21 or 22 by then. I don't really want to make a statement mm -hmm. as though that. I'm just saying it on the light. Yeah, the light but you see, Bakayoko is one man who he, he, he's done a lot of harm to the game of football because we saw him at Chelsea. He ruined the beautiful game. And we've seen him at, at, at AC Milan also. I mean, he, he isn't turning out much more for, for them at AC Milan. He, the team was up by two goals to one also when he came on. And then after coming on, they lose by three goals to two. And even causing an error which led to a goal. It looks like the coach that is got too so much. He took a dig at him 
after the game, they were saying that he needs to learn some basic things. That is how to receive the ball and pass the ball. And is this the time you learn how to receive and pass the ball? I mean, you are playing a professional level in one of the biggest teams in Europe, AC Milan, seven times European champions. And if this is the time you have to learn and receive the ball, it looks like Gattuso is sending a note to the player that he's not in his team, he's not in his plan because. I don't think but Gattuso will have time for Bakayoko to learn how to receive a ball, how to pass a ball and, and, and how to position himself whilst, whilst they are competing for the Serie A, whilst they want to get a place in Europa. I don't think they want that. So it looks like Bakayoko is sending a note out to Bakayoko. That is Gattuso sending out a note to Bakayoko that you are not in my team. I gave you the chance and you, you proved that you are really not that good. So it looks like Bakayoko might, might have to go back. We've seen players go back to their their, 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 their origin. He might have to go back to, to Monaco mm -hmm. because even Falcao, proud to, I mean, these last two seasons, he went and had failed, I mean, seasons with Manchester United and Chelsea until coming back to my, Monaco to rediscover his form. So he might just have to go back. But the Serie A is also, I mean, turned out to be interesting. I mean, Napoli getting a win against AC Milan and Juventus getting a win against Lazio. And these are the things we see in the Serie A and it looks like it's very normal. And then Cristiano Ronaldo was not on the scoring sheet again for the second time. Well, you see, Ronaldo is one man who you don't feel he, he doesn't have a time where he gets in his groove. He cannot be on a scoring sheet for about five, ten games. He comes in and all of a sudden he has four goals in three consecutive games. And how many, how many goals is that? Twelve goals. So he has played ten games, no goals. He plays thirteen games and he has twelve goals. That is Ronaldo for you. So I mean, he's not one man who you really criticize him when he isn't scoring that much. And we know that his his main point where he hits matches the Champions League and he gets in the Champions League, especially especially against the big boys, he will definitely get about three to four goals. I mean, nothing much to say about Ronaldo. It looks like he's just doing what he does. Well, our super analyst thing, Cristiano Ronaldo will definitely get back to his scoring form. But as he's getting back to his scoring form, match day three also promises us with some exciting features. And these are the following features. In AC Milan faces Roma. Bologna faces Inter Milan, Parma faces Juventus, Florentina faces Udinese, Sassuolo faces Genoa, Torino faces Pa 2015, Samadoria, Sampdoria faces Napoli, Lazio faces Frosino, Atlanta faces Calagari, and Kevo Verona faces Empoli. Well, well Kojo, you see, for AC Milan, they couldn't win their first game and then they lost against. That is Napoli, not their second game. And they are coming up against Roma in this third game. It's, it's a very tall order for them because, I mean, you are looking at a team who didn't start that much well last season. They started very well last season, but they didn't end it very well. And then this season, they, they, even in last season, there had to be, I mean, a change of managers where General Gattuso had to take over from, from that is, the coach of AC Milan at that time. So, I mean, if, if, if you're able to go by that, those dynamics, they should be able to be picking up because, I mean, from last season, Gattuso was in the helm of affairs and managing them. So he should be able to get in the best out of his place by now. But he doesn't seem to be getting it to and he's coming up against an AS Roma side. Well, for this Roma side, I also have my two thoughts about them because, I mean, we saw them make as many as 12 inclusions in this transfer window. And, I mean, the, the historical antecedents lies down there. The teams which do this kind of, I mean, transfers, they don't succeed in their first seasons. The normal spell, remember quite some season ago they did that. They brought in the likes of, I mean, Roberto Saudado, Eric Lamella, Eric Sin, a lot of places. It had to take time before they got into their group. Even Everton last season, they brought in a lot of players, the likes of Sandro Ramirez, Sigurd Sin. I mean, they brought in a lot of players last season, but they couldn't, I mean, work out well for them. Even having the coach that is Coleman getting asked out after some few, few games. So, I mean, these things don't work very well for, for, for teams in their first season. So I don't really see AS, AS Roma as a challenger in this first, first season because, I mean, they've lost a couple of good guys too. I mean, that is Raja Nyangolan left the team and even Kevin Sturodman and, and even Alison, their goalkeeper. And these men are, are, are very, I mean, they, they hold the pillars of the team because, I mean, in midfield, you know Raja Nyangolan is your man and, and, and Kevin Sturodman together. These two men in midfield offer a lot and even Alison in post was literally the best goalkeeper in the Serie A last season. So, I mean, if you lose these guys, it looks like you're losing players of your team and you're building it all together again with a whole lot of new players. It looks like it might just not go on well for them. So, I mean, looking at two teams who are not in their best of their groups, I feel you might just get it during the game. But Juventus coming up against Parma, I mean, 
this fixture, it, it used to be, I mean, a very tough fixture mm -hmm. years ago because, I mean, he had a certain Palmer who had a certain Buffon in post, post. And, 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 I mean, other big players playing for them in the likes of Luca Tony and all other big players. But, I mean, this Palmer team has, it has deteriorated with them and they are no longer, I mean, competing at the highest level. They even came from the Serie B. Serie B. Uh -huh. So, I mean, they are not a team to offer that much competition, but they went to the them in their first game against Kevo Verona. They went away and they struggled, started to take a, a last minute goal to win a game. So I, I wouldn't, I mean, say it outrightly that Juventus will win a game, but it will be very difficult for them. I believe it will be very difficult, counting on, on, the, on the back of the, the, the rivalry between these two sides. I feel it will be very difficult. And you might just, Juventus might just have to rely on, I mean, another last minute goal in order to win a game, or maybe a draw. We look forward for such a scintillating game in match day three in the Serie A, but we cannot go without talking about yesterday, yesterday's match between Eduana Stars and Raja Casablanca. On Wednesday night, Eduana Stars lost against Raja Casablanca by six goals to nil. Denis, how do you feel about this big loss? Well, we saw Eduana Stars lose by six goals to zero against Raja, and I feel the Eduana Stars one they had nothing to fight for because I mean they were already eliminated from the competition and also. I mean, there, there was a lot of distortion in camp. The, the camp was not in cool because of the food poisoning issue we had during, during their camp basis where they sent food from Ghana to Morocco and the food got fermented and, and poison, ended up poisoning the players. But I thought that they had nothing to fight for because, I mean, we already eliminated the competition from the competition and they had no mark in the competition because this was their first time playing the CAF competition. And we see teams, I mean, in their first times, they do set, they do mark, they do set, I mean, Point marks for, for, for themselves to, I mean, pass other times and even other teams in Ghana. But then I start to to do that, and I mean, they, they, this was not the best of competitions for them. And I feel coming or in latter years, they'll have to do better to, to, to act well in cup competitions. Well, the Duran Star have to do well in the latter years to come, but this is where the show comes to an end. Don't forget to follow us on our social media handles, scrolling down the screens. It has been X Rock Sports with me, Kojo Nunes.